Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent. <laughs> that might. All right. That's the only part you do. You just sit there all the time. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right. You out of here now? <laughs> I said my piece. You know what I'm saying? He's going to come back right at the end when I say any question. He's going to say no. <laughs> That's the only part you pop in that. Darn rascals. He's hilarious. <laughs> um, so last week, we talked. Uh, was it last week? No. Nah. We full ass. We skipped last week? And last week. It no, wasn't. we didn't skip last week. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. What last week, we talked about uh, Cora. I think we skipped the week before that, though. Oh. Right. Yeah, so uh, last week we talked about the matter of Korah. You know what I'm saying? Folks died about the matter of Korah. Um, and who remembers, you know what I'm saying? Who remember, or what we talked, ain't no who, but we, you know what I'm saying? I guess, <laughs> anybody watching yet? Nope. So who, you know what I'm saying? Who remembers what we talked about? Uh, everybody. Personal feelings. Everybody feel like they got some kind of stake in what they what God got going on. Everybody. Order. Think they can just do it however they want to do, dismissing the order and how it's supposed to be done. Yeah, it's, a, it's an important lesson that your experience cannot supersede what the Most High God words say. You know what I'm saying? Like just because you feel a certain way, or even just because you experienced something that was legit and real, that still can't inspire you. Or make you feel as though you have a right to do something outside of what the words say. So you got to acknowledge that. Like, you'll, you, however, whatever you feel, whatever experience you believe you had or you actually had or whatever, it has to bow down to the word. You know what I'm saying? Every single time. So you can't just say, let's say, you know what I'm saying, God gave you a vision. And in your vision, he showed you on top of all the, 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 the older men that are, that are uh, below, below you. And you look down at all the older men and they all pastors. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no wife. You ain't got no kids. You ain't got nothing. You, you in your mind, you can't then say, God showed me that I'm going to be the greatest pastor and I need to start today. You know what I'm saying? Like that can't be your interpretation of it because that's not consistent with the orders the Most High God gave. So everything that you have, every thought that you grab real quick, hold up. Uh, oh, for uh, grab a uh, first first. Um, First Corinthians fourteen. We're going to shoot for this one, TJ. Let's say twenty eight. I'm going to tell you what, if it's twenty eight, Lord moving in here today. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? The spirit moving in here today. You know what I'm saying? If it's twenty eight, y'all might as well start getting up, speaking in tongues. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. But if there be no interpreter. Let him keep silence in the congregation and let him speak to himself and to God. Uh, is it before this? I want to say it might be before this. 26. Spirit ain't moving in here. Yeah, spirit ain't moving in. How is it that, brethren, when you come together, everyone you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation, that all things be done unto edifying? Uh-huh. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or by three at the most, and that by course and let one interpret. Okay. He's but talking to you about order. This is order that he's talking about in the congregation. If a congregate, if you go to a congregation and it don't have this order, what does this tell you? It's out of order. They don't, they ain't no They're out of order. It ain't telling you that they necessarily evil. It ain't telling you that they all might be going to hell. It ain't telling you none of that. What it's telling you is whoever is running this does not understand or does not appreciate the order of the most high God. That's it. Right? So then, what you have to do is make an assessment of they're either ignorant, right? They don't know. When I say ignorant, I don't mean that in any way, you know, to disrespectfully. I'm saying, like, they either don't know, right? And they need to be taught the information or exposed to the information. 
or they know and they're choosing to do something different. Right? So this is the order that we're giving out. Most High God gives us order for a specific reason. It's even if we don't know the reason at the time, he's giving it to us for a reason. Right? Let's listen to it. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the congregation and let him speak to himself and to God. Okay. Let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. Right? So now let the prophets speak two or three. Right? So if somebody giving prophecy in your congregation, it can only be two and three of them. And what else? And let, let the other judge. Okay. And then you got to let the other judge. Right? Anybody else got to judge. But watch this. If anything be revealed to an other that sits by, let them first hold his peace. Uh-huh. For you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and, the, and all may be comforted. So all the prophecy, although it may be two or three people that prophesy, how many prophesied at one time? For you may all prophesy one by one. One at a time. So that everybody can learn. And whoever is not prophesying, guess what they're doing? They're judging. So how does a prophet judge another prophet? Or how does a person judge another prophet? By the word. Let's see it. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Mm -hmm. What that means is a prophecy that came before. So I'm a prophet, right? But 20, I'm not, right? But 20 years ago, there was another prophet. So let's just say I'm a prophet. 20 years ago, there was another prophet. Valid. He's solidified. He's a real prophet of the Most High God. He say a prophecy. He say at such and such a time, such and such is going to happen. Right? Then, if I come along, he's valid, solidified. What he said came to pass. If I come along and contradict something that he said, guess what? It shows me as invalid. You can't believe my pro prophecy. It don't make sense to believe my prophecy. If I say something that contradict another man of God that came before me who's valid. Okay, why you bring this all the way up to me, baby girl? Banana. Is it banana? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, baby girl. You want it back? Okay, here. You take a day trying to work. Here you go. Thank you. Go give it to TJ. So, um, so as a prophet... You have to be subject to the prophets. Everything that we have, just about everything that we have written in the scriptures are from prophets. So when you say that, I can't make a prophecy that contradicts Ezekiel. That don't make no sense. I can't make a prophecy that contradicts Moses. That makes zero sense. So as a prophet, you have to be subject to the prophets. So when you got all of these people that jump up in the church, right? And they be saying, oh, well, sister, uh, I feel, I feel there's a sister on this side of the room. On this side, of, somewhere over here, I want, her, I want this side of the room to be quiet. I want this side of the room, I feel it's a sister that, she been going through pain. She been up long nights worried about her kids. How many sisters that's going to describe? All of them. Every last one of them. So now all of them sitting there, oh, my God, he talking to me. And, and, and God spoke to you. But you wasn't sure that that was gospel. Sister, I'm here to tell you that today that was God speaking to you. What does that describe? Everybody that's sitting there in that darn church. Sister, I'm going to tell you. God said what he's going to do is that mountain that's in front of you. Yeah. It is now flat and the chains have fallen. Boom! You know what I'm saying? They done. Boom! You know what I'm saying? Because they all coordinate on that foolishness. So it's like now that's a prophecy. So whatever this prophet, this guy is saying that calls himself a prophet, it has to be subject to the rest of the prophets. We'll grab Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah chapter 28. I don't even know. Listen, this is all important for us to understand what we talked about last week. Right? Because we're talking, we talking about people who don't understand order. Korah didn't understand or order. Korah jumped up and looked like, well, I'm a Korahite. Technically, Moses... You a Kohathite. Aaron, you're a Kohathite. We're all Kohathites. What makes you so darn special? And why my brothers from Reuben can't get it? All of us came through the water. What 
that mean? They was all what? Baptized. They all got baptized. We look at that today. A woman might walk up and be like, I'm saved. I know the scripture. What do you mean I can't teach in the church? Can't teach in the congregation. Well, that's just a, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? Listen, me personally, if I made the rule, I wouldn't care nothing about what you, that ain't none of my darn business. But I don't make the rule. You know what I do? I got to uphold them. They won't be having it in my congregation. Any congregation that I end up running wouldn't happen to me. Woman, books say woman got to learn in silence. That's misogynistic. You know, you know what I mean? You take it up with him. You feel, look, you take this new age, this new liberal, you know what I'm saying, with all this stuff. You take that stuff and you see how far it gets you. I'm going to take what the words say and I'm going to see how far it gets me. And I'm okay if we don't end up on the same path. Like me personally, I'm fine with that. I don't have to be friends with everybody. We ain't got to be cool. I ain't got to have a million people, you know what I'm saying, tuning in and watching. Like that's none of that stuff bothers me. The only thing I care about is for the two people that watch, for the three people that might come, for all this stuff, if y'all make it into the kingdom, because I know I'm confident that what we lay down is what the most high God has written for us. I'm confident in that. So I know with the word, when the word go out truly and it's, it's taught appropriately, whatever come back is what was supposed to come back. I'm confident in that. I don't have to put no extras on it. I ain't got to try to make people feel better. I don't have to do none of that stuff. I just got to do it the way I got to hold myself accountable and I got to hold the folks accountable. Period. We do that. It's going to accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. Everything else, you know what I'm saying? Everything else, it wasn't supposed to be there. So I look at it. That thing make it simple for me. The part that make it stressful and make, make everything hard is when we take too much on ourselves. You know how you take too much on yourself? You try to take something that, that the most high God didn't give to you. Korah told Moses that he take too much on himself. No, Moses took what the most high God gave to him. Moses started off and what did he say? When the Most High God told Moses what he is supposed to be doing, what was Moses' reaction? Man. Oh, that's cool. That's light work. I can handle that. Yeah, you got the wrong guy. That's too much for me. And what did God tell him? <laughs> like, no, nah, you got it. You gonna do it? You, I even give you air to help you out. <laughs> you think it's too much when the Most High God gives you something, and when He don't give you something, you think you ain't got enough. Why don't you sit your butt down? Oh, we got, oh, man, you lucky my mind don't work like it used to. What is, uh, we pipe for you. You know what I'm saying? That is, uh. That Matthew what? It's Matthew what? Goodness gracious. Uh, I forget. It's Matthew, though. All right, what, what, what I call right here? Jeremiah 28. This is Jeremiah chapter 20, I said 28? Yeah. I probably want what, 29? Nah, you want. I want twenty eight. Uh, you want the fake prophet? That's twenty eight. Yeah. Hannah nine. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is uh. Let's let's grab Jeremiah chapter twenty eight. I just want to show y'all how the prophets got to be subject to the prophets. And so if this if this pastor or this prophet that claims to be a prophet jumps up in front of a church that you attend or you have you that you visit and you see him jump up and he's sitting there telling the prophecy about some young lady or some young man or whatever and it's just some blanket prophecy that he ain't being specific about and it's a, 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 a metaphorical chain that's going to snap or a metaphorical mountain that's going to be flattened and lowered and all that stuff. All that stuff that you're talking about, if he gets to saying like that and it's all positive, I just want you all to see how this is supposed to play out according to a valid prophet, right? Solidified, legitimate. It's Jeremiah. Watch it. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 1. Watch the, watch the book say. And it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azar, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying, Thus speaks Yahuwah of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Uh -huh. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. Right? So just to understand what he's saying, is he's saying, look, we've been going through some tough times. Some of our people have been captured. But guess what? God just told me we're about to win this war. And all the stuff that they stole from us, it's about to be brought back. So he's giving good news. This is good news that he's giving. He's saying, God told me 
that God has conquered these people, that we about to win this war by the hand of God. Now, for anybody listening, that sounds exactly what, what God might say. You got somebody against the people of God. He stole from the people. He stole from God himself, stole from his temple. You think God going to let that ride? So Ananiah come, he tell you, no, God ain't letting that ride. Right? It feel like something that God might say. Just like it feel like something that God might say when the pastor jump up and be like, you know, this woman mountain all chains are loose. And God said that he going to do this, that and the other for you next year and all this stuff. This is this is 2022 and 22 is the number of renewings. You know what I'm saying? All that silly stuff they be coming up with. 22 is the number of 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 reinvigorated spirit. Say so throw this stuff at you. It's like, man, I said, that definitely sound like something that God might do. God might say. I mean, he did take us out of Egypt with a strong hand. All oh, that's facts. What it comes down to is, are the prophets subject mm, to right the now. prophets, right? So watch what Hannah and I say after this. Leave it alone. <laughs> and I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, saith Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord, even the prophet Jeremiah said, amen, the Lord do so. Right? So Jeremiah, he didn't jump out and be like, no, nah, you lying. Because Jeremiah actually hearing from God. And when Jeremiah hear from God, it's the opposite. Jeremiah said, for, from what Jeremiah is hearing is no, my children, the children of Israel are being punished. And I'm using Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to do the punishing. So I'm going to let him take everything out of my temple if he want it. I'm going to let him kill as many of y'all as I'm going to let him kill. And he's going to take some of y'all captive in the Babylon. God said, because you disobeyed me, this is happening. That's what Jeremiah hearing. So Jeremiah would love for what Hananiah to be saying is true. But that's not what I'm hearing. And I know I'm a prophet. I don't know about you. So watch what Jeremiah said. He said, amen. Yahuwah do so. Even the prophet Jeremiah said, amen. The Lord do so. The Lord perform your words, which you have prophesied, to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in my ears and in the ears of all the people. Uh-huh. The prophets that have been before me and before you of old prophesied both against many countries, against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right. So he said the first thing he said, I hear what you're saying. Nevertheless, hear me out. The prophets that was before me and the prophets of old. What is he saying? Why is he talking about prophets before him and prophets of old? Why would that matter? You got to be subject to the prophets. The prophets have to be subject to the prophets. You see a real prophet, first thing he go to is, well, if what you're saying don't feel right to me, so I have to consider what do the old prophets say because I know they valid and both of us going to have to fall in line with them. So let's consider it. The prophets of old and the prophets that were before me, or verse by verse, the prophets before me and the prophets of old did what? Prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war. So, uh, uh, first of all, they prophesied against who? Many countries. So, the very first thing is, they prophesied against many countries. Hananiah, who is he prophesying to right now? His people. He in a comfort zone. When we see these pastors jump out and they do all that stuff, where they at? In their own church. They in their own church. Or some church that they're visiting. Some church that they visited that they got invited to. That's some partner or sister church of theirs. They're in a comfort zone. When's the last time you seen one of these, one of these coots go to, you know what I'm saying, some opposing? Let's see, let's just see one of these Christian pastors, right? Come to a Hebrew Israelite church. You know what I'm saying? One of these Hebrews, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the real Hebrew Israelite, the ones that be having like the darn belts and the dresses. You know what I'm talking about? 
the one that be standing out with the sign, they be having the darn cardboard sign. <laughs> you know, they, you know, like the one, you know what I'm saying? They be having their little, what they call them? They poster boards. They on the poster board with the pictures on it. You know what I'm saying? All that. Get get one of them Hebrew is like, let the, let the Christian pastor, man, the Pentecostal, you know what I'm saying, Christian pastor, jump up and pull that crap at one of these camps. Let's just see how it goes, because then you're doing something to, to a different audience. It's not your comfort zone. But even doing that, it still don't describe what he said, because he said they prophesied to who? Many countries. To many countries. This is many nationals. Many different places. Right? And then what? And against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. I'm going town to town and I'm talking to each governor. I'm saying, listen, your city coming down if you don't stop this stuff, according to the Most High God. California, you're going to see some rough days, according to the, I ain't saying that, I'm just saying this is an example. Right? You're going to see some, some rough days, according to the Most High God. Nevada going to do this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? I'm going way out. Okay, well, New York, this going to happen. Tennessee, you thought you got by, but this going to happen. I'm just throwing some states out there. God forbid anything happened at the most high God. You know what I'm saying? Ain't will. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just throwing some stuff out. That's what it might look like. It's not going to look like a person talking to a church. It's going to look like a person talking to a ruler of a nation or a ruler of a country or a territory. He might talk to Biden directly. Somebody need to talk to Biden. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God, give me a word right now. You know what I'm saying? Goodness gracious. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? In three days, the most high God said, he's going to lower that gas by $5. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need that thing. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I ain't going to question a bit of it. Uh, that sound right to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey Amen. You know, who would do so? Who would more also? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's funny. Yeah. Keep going. Watch this. So you're going to testify to many countries? Testified both against many countries and against great kingdoms. Okay. And against war, great kingdoms. Of war and of evil and of pestilence. So he wasn't talking about how chains are going to be broken, mountains are going to be moved. He said when he's talking to these people that are probably against him, he's telling them like, Nah, you about to have a war. Your whole people, everybody about to get sick. And great what? And great pestilence and of evil. And of evil. This is a tornadoes, all types of stuff about to be hitting this place. He's not, he not going over there telling them good news. He's telling them negative news. And he got to do it to people with authority that can have him killed or have him put in jail or have him whatever. Right? It's a risk. It's a burden to be a, a prophet. There's not no like, you know, you don't get to walk in and be like the superhero. Everybody out on where you get a blessing and you get a blessing. It don't work like that. Not at all. Yeah. It's a burden. It's a responsibility to be a prophet. I would hate it. All these people want to prophesy. You don't know what you asked them for. But shut your darn mouth and take what the most high God gave to you. Even if you feel like that's nothing. You take nothing and you make it something. I got a couple parables. I can't wait till we get back to the gospel. I got some parables that explain it to you. You know what I'm saying? At the very least, you, you know what I'm saying? You get, you know what I'm saying? Take whatever you got and you give it to the banks. You know what I'm saying? At least it'll, it'll get some interest. Y'all mess around and bury it. Knowing that the man is austere. Knowing he's a hard man. Keep going. Watch this. The prophet was prophesied of peace. This is what this is what Jeremiah is saying in response to Hananiah's peaceful, good news prophecy. He that don't feel right to Jeremiah because it's direct contradiction of what Jeremiah is hearing from the Most High God. He said the prophet that prophesies what of peace and what when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that Yahuwah has truly sent him. If you telling me good news, that's not like the rest of the prophets. If all you got is good news, that don't line up with the rest of the prophets. So if that's your prophecy and you ain't got no bad news, you only got good news. I'm going to know you as a prophet only after what you said come to pass. If once it come true, then it'd be like, okay, he was a prophet. We not believe in good news just because you said it. Right? Okay. We don't believe some good news so because it happened. So TJ can help you. Then we'll go back and be like, you know what? So-and-so called it. He told us most of our guy was going to do this. It's good news. 
So and so told us the most high God was gonna do this, and guess what? Okay, we'll go back to him. We'll be like, all right, for sure, you're a prophet now. But until then, we're not rolling with that stuff. That don't make no sense. Right? That don't make no sense. Even Yahushua, who, who brings the gospel, the good news, what do you have to prophesy first? Well, uh, repent. The first thing he had to prophesy is, no, I got to die. Man. Son of man, got to die. Before he died, what did he go on a whole chapter talking about? The end time. Man said, look, man, y'all looking at this temple, man, it's going to be a time that you ain't going to see one brick on top of another in this thing. Yeah, buddy. Everybody. Oh, no, nah, man. Look, the abomination that they call it desolate. You know what I'm saying? They call it desolation. You know what I'm saying? Listen, that thing going to surround this place. When you see that, you better run. Oh, man, if you out in the field. You know what I'm talking about? That boy telling you about pestilence and violence and wars and rumors of war. He telling you all this stuff because he knows it don't even make sense that I come here and I'm only telling y'all good news. That wouldn't be subject to the darn prophets. I got to give you some bad news. So that way when you see that happen, then you'll be like, okay. So the good news he was telling us that's going to happen too. But if, if you don't know the scripture, how are you going to have people subject to the scripture? And that's the problem in these churches. Nobody's teaching them the scripture, so they don't know how to make people subject to the scripture. Let's grab, um, let's grab uh, Numbers chapter 19. Where we leave off? 18, right? Mm, we left off on 18. We own 19. Okay, so this is uh, Numbers chapter 19. Give me verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring you a red heifer without spot, mm -hmm. wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came a yoke. Okay, so I need a red heifer. That's her, like a, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be one of them, the, them bright, brow. yeah, them brow, them bright, uh, brown. yeah, bright brown cows, you know what I'm saying? So I got that red with, with you know what I'm saying? The book might call ruddy, you know what I'm saying? Got that red look, right? So you got, I need a red heifer, right? So that's a cow, you know what I'm saying? Female, it's a cow, right? So I need a red heifer that never what? There's no blemish and never was, came up on a yoke. Can't have no blemish, so can't have no marks, no, you know what I'm saying? No discoloration, nothing like that. And, there's never been a yoke on her. So that means she ain't never been made to work. Yeah. Right? She got to be fresh, clean, untainted. Okay? Keep going. And you shall give her unto Eliezer the priest, and that he may bring her forth outside the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. And Eliezer the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. Mm -hmm. And one shall burn the heifer in, the, in his sight, her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall he burn. So now, the chapter just started off talking to us about a red heifer, right? We're looking at it, and if we, if we need context, it might be difficult to be like, why are we talking about a darn? Like, where did this come from? Why are we talking about it? Let's keep reading. Let's see if we can try to figure it out. And the priest shall take the cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. All right, we ain't going to get into it, but all this testify to Yah uh, the Messiah, Yahushua. Then the priest shall wash his clothes and shall bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the evening. Okay. And he that burns, he that burns her shall wash his clothes in water and bathe his flesh in water and shall be unclean until the evening. Okay. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up outside the camp in a clean place, and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of, for a water of separation. Right? So now you take the ashes of this red heifer. It has to be taken outside the camp. Now remember, we already have a few places outside the camp for ashes, but the places for ashes that we have outside the camp usually are unclean places. So this one has to be kept in a clean place. So it's got to be a separate place, a separated place, only for these ashes, right? It's a clean place. You set these ashes down. And what happened? What are they used for? And it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a, a water of separation. So this is water of separation. What's another way of saying water of separation? It's a purification for sin. Right? It's holy water. Mm -hmm. 
So you look at it. This is what this is what you know. What I'm saying this is true holy water. What it's telling you. It's telling you that this is how this is how you deal with true holy water, right? So let's keep going. Watch this. Yes, ma'am. And he that gathers the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. Uh huh. And it shall be Bless unto you. the children of Israel and unto the stranger that sojourns among them for a statute forever. Uh huh. He that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. Mm -hmm. He shall purify himself with it on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. So now, how are we using this water as separation? To purify an unclean person that comes near a dead body. So now, why would that be important right now? Because what just of, happened? Because a lot of people about to die yeah. in the wilderness. What just happened? Uh, what was that before? Uh, Cora and them just got killed. And what happened after that? And it was a pestilence, was it? People got sick. And why the did people plague? get sick? The plague. Because they followed Cora. There's some people. We we imagine it didn't say it very clearly, but we didn't, we imagine that there's some people that wasn't right right there when when they got swallowed into the ground. So they came back, and Cora being Cora and the, and the brothers being men of renown, they came back and they followed them brothers. Say, so looking like Moses, you killed. What happened to him? They got put in the ground. They got put in them. You heard that or you saw it? No, I heard. You know what I'm saying? It's too many people. I couldn't make it over there, but that's what everybody said happened. Man, I ain't put nobody in no dark. I don't know how you Moses got rid of them boy. Let me go talk to Moses. That's how I imagine it happened, right? So they go and they run up to Moses. Like, Moses, what you talking about? Then all of a sudden, the pestilence broke out on the people. Right? Yeah, and he said Aaron to hurry up and make a sacrifice. Aaron had to stand in the middle of them boys, huh? You imagine he in the middle. Remember he had to hold his hand in the middle? Who he look like? Yeah, sure. He got to stand in the middle with the living and the dead, don't he? Who he look like? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right? So Aaron had to stand in the middle of them boys. Then his, it stopped the plague. Yeah. So now everybody is around what? Dead yeah, body. Everybody is around dead darn bodies. Which makes them all unclean. So now the most high God said, I got you. Here goes some water for you. It can't be this regular. We got a severe situation now. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> There's a lot of it. God, most high God looking like, all right, I know I made a mess, okay? I'm going to help you clean it up. We have a very severe situation. Give me a red heifer. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no blemishes on her. And I don't want one that y'all already put to work. You bring her to me. Give me a little bit of cedar wood, a little hyssop. You know what I'm saying? Let's burn it. Burn it off. Take the ashes. Put it over there. Over there. Don't let nothing over there by it. It's a clean place. You put, you sprinkle the water with them ashes. That's the water of separation. Anybody who was around the dead body, you put that on them on the third day and on the what day? On the seventh day. And on the seventh day, and they'll be clean at even. Put it on them on the third day, and then on the seventh day, they'll be clean, right? Is that what it say? Oh, let me read it again. And make sure. He shall purify himself with it on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. Right? So you hit it with him on the third day, you know what I'm saying? And on the seventh day, that boy be clean. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead and purifies not himself defiles the tabernacle of the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from, uh, from Israel. Mm -hmm. Because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him, he shall be unclean. Mm -hmm. His uncleanness is yet upon him. This is the law where a man dies in a tent. All that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. Mm -hmm. And every open vessel which has no covering bound upon it is unclean. Uh -huh. And whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in the open fields or a dead body or a bone of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days. Mm -hmm. And for an unclean person, they shall take all take of the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin and running water shall be put thereunto in a vessel. Uh -huh. And the clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in water and sprinkle it upon the tent and upon the vessels and upon the persons that were there. And upon him that touches a bone or one slain or one dead or a grave. That's right. And the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day. And on the seventh day, and on the seventh day, he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be clean at evening. But the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation 
because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The water of separation has not been sprinkled upon him. He is unclean. Mm -hmm. And it shall be a perpetual statute unto them that he that sprinkles the water of separation shall wash his clothes, and he that touches the water of separation shall be unclean until even. Mm -hmm. So now even the person who deals with the water is unclean, right? So now the person that prepares it and deals with the water is unclean. I'm teaching, baby girl. You can't teach. So you can lay down or you can go walk. Okay, keep going. And whatsoever the unclean person touches shall be unclean, and the soul that touches it shall be unclean until the evening. Mm -hmm. Twenty. I want the next chapter now. Okay, it's Numbers chapter twenty. Do verse one. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. Mm -hmm. and there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. Now, why, why might there be no water for the congregation? Some boys in the desert. And what else just happened? They used it all for the purification. You can just look at it. You got a bunch of people die. All of a sudden, now you need this new purification uh, process for people to have dead bodies. And it involves water. Right after that, they'll tell you, ain't nobody got no water. <laughs> right? So now you're looking at it. If you look at it the way these things are actually happening, these people have valid complaints. They're about to complain about not having water. Imagine looking at it. We need you to have water. We ain't got no darn water. All because you can easily be like, Moses, this is all your fault. It's easy to come to that conclusion. It's wrong, but it's easy to do. Right? Let's see. Keep going. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. Uh-huh. And the people trolled with Moses and, and spake, saying... So they strived against Moses, fighting against Moses, and they spake, and they said what? Would to God that we had died with our brother and, when our brother and died before the Lord. Right? It would make better sense. They looking like it would make better sense than we to die when Cora and them died. Then for us to mess around and come out all this time and die now from thirst. Go. Go. Right. I have to suffer and die slowly because I'm too thirsty. Right. It would be better if the ground just swallowed me up or if I just suddenly got sick and died. This is the logic that they're using. They're looking like, look, watch what they say. They'll tell you. And why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? You did. Listen, you promised us. Where did, they prom why, where did Moses come? Moses and Aaron, what did they come and promise us? Milk and honey. Oh, they said they're going to take us to a land of milk and honey is what they promised us. We make it out to the desert. It's been a year. Okay, we got a nice little tabernacle out of it. We in our second year now. And then all of a sudden, we go spy out the land. Right? He tells us to go spy out the land. Look like some good land. However, it's giants in the land. We don't think we can take them giants. Everybody telling us, nah, it's a no-go. Right? All of a sudden, in response to that, Moses and his God didn't like that response. So now he come back and give us what message? And you're going to die here. Now we're stuck here in the wilderness and we're going to die according to Moses. So from them, this feels like a darn trap. I could have stayed in Egypt for all this mess. I've been out here walking for darn years and now I'm stuck out here? You crazy? And I ain't got nothing to drink? And I've been eating this darn bread this whole time? It's e look, it's easy for us to read this and be like, oh, they ain't got no faith, which is true. I'm not, don't get me wrong. It's true they ain't got no faith. But, but it's important to understand the thinking that they have because if you just look at that, they ain't got no faith, you ain't going to never realize when you ain't got faith. Like, would you, like, how would you be in that situation? You know what I'm saying? That's what we have to learn. How would you be? We have to learn of how, when I face the same types of challenges that they have, I need to make sure I don't face 
that, I mean, I don't have the same type of responses that they have. That's what this is about. In their mind, though, this is some foolishness. And plus, they ain't never had any de real dealings with God ever. They ain't ever. They ain't got they all the scripture. No we ain't got. They ain't got. They couldn't read about themselves and be like, "Oh, this so and so happened." Yeah. They ain't got no guidance. Most like God using them as an, as an example for us. This is their first introduction to who God is. Very first. Besides, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they wasn't alive at that time, and they just that's just hearsay from parents' stories passed down. I put the reason why we put it in these terms is so that people can. It's easy to just look at this stuff and be like, oh, that's crazy. They stupid. Because we look at it all like it all happened in one day. We're not looking at it. This is years. It's like, man, if so God did a miracle in front of me, that would be it. Did that another? all like, yeah, that's your mouth talking. <laughs> you start questioning it. Was that even really God? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How many times y'all didn't have something happen? Like, oh, God did this for me. And the next day, is God real? Stuff happen all the time. You know what I'm saying? Even if you don't say it out loud, you be thinking, oh, anybody listening to your butt. You the same. We the same people. Ain't nothing changed. We the same darn people. Man, when I read it, and we worse off now because we got all the examples in the world to tell us how not to be. Man, when I read it, it felt like it was us. Yeah, I didn't know it was, but I was like, dang, this is exactly how we are. This is how we be acting. Yeah, it's the same exact people. So it's important for us to put ourselves in our in their shoes, right? Because otherwise, it's just gonna be a story to us, and we're not gonna learn nothing from it. The book is showing you how they are reacting to, to circumstances, real circumstances that are going on. They looking at it like, you know, it's a reason why the most high God made sure their complaint was there. They tell them all like, this don't make no sense. I could have stayed in Egypt for this. It don't, this, I don't, I don't understand why you have you brought me out of Egypt so I could die here. This don't make no sense to me. You tell me already I have no hope I can't get out of here. I was hoping Cora would, you know what I'm saying, kind of take over this thing and give us some some different hope. Because clearly you ain't running this thing right. Then you kill him. That's how they looking at it. You kill the man. People falling dead. Now we have to clean everybody who left with water. Now we ain't got no darn water. What are we supposed to do? Let's see. And why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord into the wilderness that we and our cattle should die here? And why have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us unto this evil place? It is no place of seed or figs or vines or pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Why do you think they fell upon their faces? Because they think they're about to get hit with another plague. That part of it. But the other part of it is like, some of what they saying is valid, y'all. We really don't got no water. <laughs> right? Watch this. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather the assembly together, you and Aaron, your brother, and speak unto the rock and before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And you shall bring forth them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation their beast drink. Mm -hmm. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, and he commanded him, as he commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, mm -hmm. and he said unto them, Here now, you rebels, uh -huh. must we fetch you water out of this rock? Must who? Must we fetch you water out of this rock? Must who? Must we fetch you water out of this rock? Moses looking at it, do we got to keep doing this for y'all? Do y'all not trust us? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Me, God, and Aaron been looking out the whole time. You gonna make me, God, and Aaron kind of get together and do this again? Must we fetch you this water? That's how Moses kind of put it out to him, right? Now look at it from Moses' point of view. I'm the man. Nothing is happening but through me. I'm the one that got to keep going to God to save y'all butts. Right now, I can just shut up most I got to kill all y'all. If I just shut up, if I don't, if I don't plead on y'all behalf right now, every one of y'all darn dead. And that thing ain't going, like it ain't going to bother nobody. He already told me the man started a new one with me. And I love my kids. But I'm sitting there pleading for y'all ungrateful but You got to think how Moses got to be thinking about this. For y'all ungrateful butts, I'm sitting here pleading. So do I, do we got to do this for y'all again? In Moses' mind, 
ain't nothing wrong. Read again. Read again what the Most High God said. Because at this point, it wouldn't feel like anything is wrong for anybody reading this. Take the rod and gather the assembly together, you and Aaron, your brother. And he said, you, Moses, and Aaron, your brother, you take the rod and you do this. Watch this. And speak unto the rock before their eyes, and, uh -huh. and it shall give his water, and you shall give forth them water out of the rock. The rock is going to give his water, and you are going to give the people the water from the rock. Right? What else? So you shall give the congregation. So who? Be, so you. You shall what? Give the congregation and their beasts drink. It don't feel like Moses did anything wrong. Most High God told him, you do it. The water going to come to you from the rock and you going to give it to the congregation. Moses came and he said, we, that's consistent. Aaron, me, God, we all, you know what I'm saying, had a part in this. Right? All of it seemed consistent. Everything seemed right. Well, watch this. And Moses left up his hand and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. Mm -hmm. And the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also. And the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron, because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation in the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with Yahuwah and was sanctified, and he was sanctified in them. You have to understand, nobody gets by, nobody gets a pass. This whole time, Moses been doing everything he's supposed to do. He been bearing up this people, carrying the burden of this people since they left Egypt. He doing everything that he could, he's supposed to do, right? Mozart God called him saying we instead of, and he charged, the charge that he gave him is that because you did not, you and Aaron did not sanctify me. What does that mean? You didn't set me apart. You didn't separate me. You didn't set me apart. You put me in a group with you. That's not appropriate. If he would have said me and Aaron, he might have been all right. If he would have said, Yahuwah gave his water to you. He would have been doing the right thing. Right? But by saying we, okay. go play, go sit down with each as if he's in company with God, go sit with TJ. well, that goes against the whole message that he's been delivering this whole time. Go play. The people come to Moses because Mo, they blame Moses, right? Every time Moses come back and be like, man, y'all did this. Y'all split this seat for us. Y'all did this. Y'all, he giving all the glory to the Most High God. This one time he says, we. Most High God was like, oh, so you put me in a group with you. Therefore, I'm not holy. I'm not separated. I'm not set apart. That's a charge. And because you didn't do that, guess what? Just like everybody else in this wilderness, you're going to die here too. So now, Moses and Aaron don't get to see the promised land either. And Moses has been the one that's carrying the whole load to get there. These are the types of things that we have to think about when we say, well, maybe God is unfair or fair or not. I can tell you what, God's way is fair. We have to readjust what we think of as fair. We try to determine what's a big deal based off of, based off of how we deal with other people. Right? Like if you see a person that's, if you see a person that's narcissistic, what qualities they might have. Oh, arrogant, full of themselves, always talking about themselves. They always want the glory. Mm -hmm. So we can say God is what? Narcissistic, I guess. Right? So when we dealing with a person, we look narcissistic. That's a bad thing. Why is that a bad thing when we dealing with a person? Because they could be they could come across as selfish, not really helping others. They think of themselves higher than what they actually are. People don't realize that the reason why it's a bad thing to be narcissistic at an individual level is because there's a God. We're saying that you're elevating yourself above what you are as if you're above me, as if you're God. That's where the idea is coming from. So then what we do, we lose that context of where this came from. And then what we start to do is we say, well, God is narcissistic. Well, no, God is the basis of where narcissism comes from. 
You can't then reapply it to him because there's nobody above him. He deserves to do all that. He deserves to say, no, I'm the man. I'm the only one that's supposed to be doing it. I'm the reason why it's wrong for you to do it. When we think of God and we think of justice, we can't apply the justice that we have for individuals because we get that justice from God. That's why the man tell you, don't be cut, don't, don't covet, don't be jealous, essentially. Right? And then he turn around and say, I'm a jealous God. You can't be jealous because you're not me. I'll give you a real world example, right? We 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 got kids, right? So for the kids, we might teach them certain things, right? I'm gonna take you to school every day, but don't you get in nobody's car. I don't care if one of your friend's parents is coming to pick you or pick y'all up and they say, hey, don't, don't your butt get in a car with no stranger. You wait for me to come get you. And that might, that might be something that we say. Okay. Listen, you can have some candy. I'll buy you the candy bar when we get here. Don't you take no candy from no strangers. Right? So the message that we're sending the kid is, it is okay to take candy from me. Why? Why is it okay to take candy from me and not from a stranger? Because I'm your parent. You can trust me. I'm responsible for you. You don't know what is happening out there. So even if the kid don't understand that concept, if the kid listen to his parent or to her parent, the kid will be all right. If the kid don't listen to the parent, what is going to happen? The parents are going to punish you. You are going to get punished. Now, you could be an idiot and call your mom a hypocrite and say, well, you give me candy, so why can't they give me candy? <laughs> you could be an idiot and do that, or you can sit your butt down and do what your mama say. And maybe one day, you'll be old enough to have some kids and you'll understand it. Or you can not listen, and maybe one day, somebody give you some poisonous candy, they kidnap you or whatever, all the stuff that your mom is trying to protect you from, your dad is trying to protect you from. And that's the part that you can't see from your limited kid brain. All of us under God have limited kid brain. That's why I don't try to try to explain the Bible and give a reason for everything. That's not what the Bible is here for. The Bible is not here to solve and answer every question for you. That's a lie if anybody tell it to you. That's not what it is. The Bible is here to give you enough information where God can say, I gave you enough to make a decision. Now, based off of what I give you, what say you? And you got to choose. Is that enough to believe or is it not? And if it's not, that's fine for you. You got to face whatever consequences come with it. You got to make sure you got to take that way. You got to see if you're right. You got to see if you're wrong. However it's going to play out. Books say you're going to be wrong. That's what I'm rolling with. Right? Everything fair game. Anybody can do whatever they want to do. Just let somebody put it in perspective for you. This ain't no fairy tale. This ain't no, this not, you can't judge what how God doing based on how you judge, you know what I'm saying, your brother or sister. You know what I'm saying? That's not how it works. He's the basis of how we judge people. All these traditions, all this weird morality, no matter what religion you come from, it's based off of the idea that there's somebody up there. Now, their ideas might be off, but the basis is from that idea. The whole idea of morality is based of it. How you, I be looking at how you don't believe in any God, you're an atheist, but you got morality. That's a waste of time to me. How are you going to talk to me about social constructs of, of, of transgender and this, that, and the other, and you believe in that? I mean, yeah, that's a social construct, and then you talk to me about morality. What's that then? Morality is not a social construct then. Somebody didn't just make up morality and say, this is what you should do or shouldn't do. Who cares then? Be consistent with what you do. And I ain't saying you can't have morality. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm just saying, put it all in perspective. That way, at least you know what you're doing ain't making sense or it is. Let's keep going. Watch this. And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Israel. Look, so Moses sent messages from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Right? And he, the message starts off with, Yo, this is from the brother. You know what I'm saying? Israel, you remember us? We 
be your brother. Right? Watch what Edom say. Or watch, what, watch what Moses say to Edom. You know all the travail that has befallen us. Mm -hmm. How our fathers went down into Egypt. And then we dwelt in Egypt a long time. So look how he said. He said, you know this. We dwelt in Egypt a long time. What else happened? And the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. Uh-huh. And when we cried unto Yahuwah, he heard our voice. Uh-huh. And sent an angel and brought us forth out of Egypt. Uh-huh. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of your border. Uh-huh. We at your border. Listen, I'm sending you a letter, Edom. I'm telling you, you heard about us. Man, you know how we was in Egypt. We not no more. You think Edom heard about what happened to Egypt? Probably. Right? Angel Lord, you know, Moses didn't go into gory detail. Angel Lord came through, took care of some things. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know how it happened. Just took care of some things. And now we out. And we happen to be at your border. How many of us is it? A lot. Over a million people standing outside your border. Imagine that. Imagine that. I got my whole city. We good. No trouble. Maybe a month or so ago, I heard who ran up on who? They spied out some land. Really? Of the Canaanite? And then they went out and the Canaanite dog. You remember? Because remember, they spied out the land, right? And then the most high guy, after they spied his land, he said, nah, y'all not going up. Nah, I'll leave it alone. Then the people was like, oh, my bad. We gonna go and try to fight. Even though, and Moses was like, y'all can't take the ark. You who ain't with y'all. Y'all gonna get stomped out. And what happened to them? They got stomped out. You don't think that message went around? So now Edom looking like, you at Kadesh, huh? <laughs> Is that right? What you want to know? Right? Watch what Moses asked him. Let oh, sorry, I, my brother, my brother, you know, you know what we've been through. Brother, what's up? Watch this. Let us pass, I pray thee, through thy country. We will not pass through the fields or through the vineyards, neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right hand or to the left until we have passed your borders. And Edom said to him, you shall not pass by me lest I come out against you with a sword. Right? We going nah, that's no, that's not happening. You're not what you got a million plus, and you think you about to walk through my territory after what y'all tried to do, old boy, and got whooped out. That's not happening here, right? That's just not happening here. Matter of fact, you ask me again, and we gonna come out. We, we gonna come out against you right now. What's wrong with y'all? You got a million plus, and you just want to walk right through the middle of my stuff. Moses like, man, listen, we ain't even going to drink. We ain't going to pick from no trees. We don't want nothing. We just going to go straight on foot. It's all good. He looking like, no, nah, that don't make no sense. Edom is looking like that doesn't make sense to me. Y'all just got, y'all just got into it. With some people to the north of us. Now they whooped you out. And we don't whoop them out. So you definitely don't want it with us. <laughs> you might want to go around. Right? Is what he's trying to tell you. You might want to take your butt and walk the long way. Okay? Let's see what happens. Don't hit, baby girl. And the children of Israel said unto him, We will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of thy water, then I will pay for it. Mm -hmm. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. All right? He said, listen, we will not do anything except walk through. If somebody do drink anything, I will pay, charge us. I just don't want to walk around. Like, can we just go through? Watch what Edom do. Oh, so you think I'm, I'll tell you what Edom's saying. Oh, so you think I'm playing. That's what Edom's saying. Okay, oh, so you think I'm playing. Watch this. And he said, you shall not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people and with a strong hand. Edom came out, all the soldiers lined up, they on their horses. Come, come, come. Come on, what's up? I told you, no, we told you you weren't going to go through, right? Y'all want to come through? Edom came out with a strong hand. He had all the army. Because it's a million people. That's not normal. You, you have to put it in perspective. That's not normal for that many people to be moving at one time. And they already got activity on their belt. So you know they with the scraps. And we know Egypt was running stuff. All of a sudden, y'all leave and they're nothing. We not saying, we about, you plead, boy, we, you, you ain't coming to my land. What's wrong with you? We fight for ours around here. We ain't Egypt. That's how they thinking. They looking at y'all like you're a threat to me. 
You have way too many people. Remember, they have every single person in our nation. We started to outgrow Egypt. Not saying we have more people than Egypt, but we started to outgrow them in terms of space. So we took a nation of people and every single one of them is walking. Normally, when a nation go to war, do they bring everybody? No. No, you bring a portion of the men who are willing to fight. So that would be normal. If I got a nation, I'm be like, all right, send, uh, I mean, if I send 20% of my boys, that's a big, that's a big take. Send 20% of the boys out there, and it's only going to be the men that's willing to fight. Now we got the whole shebang. So if I'm not studying very closely, look and be like, okay, in the back, that's all women and children and all that. I'm just looking at, boy, that's a big old crowd there. Look how big that army is. You think I'm about to sit here and let you walk through? I heard Pastor Peach on this. Yeah, eat them. Eat them. Yeah, eat them. Didn't let them through. And this, that, and that. Shut your darn mouth. You don't have to. You're not putting yourself in these men's position. Of course he didn't darn let them through. You wouldn't have let them through. He's your scary butt. Five black people walk past your white butt and y'all clinching perches. Getting dropping off of the darn curb, y'all scary butts. And he got the nerve to, on a Christian, all these people get on my nerve. <laughs> they get on my nerve because it's like you're not being realistic. You hopping off the darn skirt. You about to get hit by a car instead of walking by a black man. And then you're going to get mad because Edom didn't let a million people that look like they whipped the scrap walk through my land? My kids live here. Well, if you don't walk your butt around, I don't know y'all like that. Talking about brother. <laughs> now, most not look, they right in that the most high God is going to punish Edom for it. But understand where Edom was coming from at the same time. Edom tells you to ask a couple questions. You know what I'm saying? But listen, I'm protecting my territory right now. I get it. I understand. I don't think I would have made a different choice. I'll be honest about it. A million people. I'm like, <laughs> Brother, I don't know. Am I you sure I'm your brother? You don't know nothing about you. All right, let's keep going. Watch this. Thus, Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border, wherefore Israel turned away from him. And the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, journeyed from Kadesh and came unto Mount Or. Uh -huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in Mount Or by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, mm -hmm. for he shall not enter the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because uh -huh. he rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. Uh -huh. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up unto the Mount Or. Oh, I thought this was cold. Mm -hmm. And strip Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eleazar his son, and Aaron shall be gathered to his people, and he shall die there. Right? So Aaron, you know what I'm saying, along with his son, he got stripped of his garments, it got put on, uh, put on his son, and Aaron was left to die. Right before getting into the promised land, you have to look. Aaron got a couple violations under him. Most I got passed over all these things. This last one, he's like, okay, well, you've served your time. You've served. You have to understand how God works. God is looking like I'm. Cool. I have as much mercy as I need to have as long as you serving a purpose for me. But you're not getting by. You might keep your position. Everybody might look at you a certain way. That's cool. Understand this. Everything that you did, you going to pay for it, one way or another. People look at it like Miriam. Oh, yeah, Miriam, you know what I'm saying? She got, she got, she got leprosy right away, and nothing happened to Aaron, and they was in the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because it don't make sense to give the high priest leprosy. Can't work. So because of that, you got to pass for now, right? But now, Miriam just died. Now, Aaron died at the end of it, same results, right? And Moses is in the same bucket, right? All right, keep going, watch this. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up into Mount Or in the sight of all the congregation. In the sight of all the congregation, watch this. And, Mount, and Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them on Eliezer, his son. Mm -hmm. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eliezer came down from the mount. Mm -hmm. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned Aaron for 30 days, even all the house of Israel. So for 30 days, we mourned our brother, right? That was our high priest. That was our first high priest. With no small feet. He led us. So we mourned him for 30 days. But then the son, Eliezer, ended up taking it. As soon as Eliezer was ready, Moses, I got like, all right, we're good. 
we good. You go over there, strip them from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. These two, strip them from everybody. I die. Like, like they just lay down and go to sleep. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying? You probably old. You know what I'm saying? You probably just lay down. You know what I'm saying? Most of God was like, all right, that's good. Could have been worse. Yeah. Could have been worse. Right? But he tra he treated a man of God with honor. Right? He let everybody see that the mantle going from him, not to no stranger. And he didn't take it from his household, from him to his son. Right? Most high God didn't treat him with no dishonor. It's the high priest, though. You still got to get it. You still ain't going to see the land. And that's it. When I say it's done, it's done. Moses going to get it a similar way. Somewhat. Keep going. Watch this. <clears throat> And when the king, when King Arad, the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. Mm -hmm. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, if you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. Right. So he fought against us because remember, he hearing the rumors too. Right. Oh, Y'all spied on the Canaanites. These are the ones. He saw that we went up Cadence, we going around because we couldn't go through Edom. So he fought against us too. He took some of us prisoner. Watch this. And the Lord hearkened unto the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of that place Horma. Right? So we destroyed them and their cities. We fought against them, and that was done. Right? Keep going. Also, even though we're going through the wilderness, God still had a little mercy on them with the, country, the cities that we did destroy. We got to live in them. Yep. Yep. And they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Mm -hmm. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For mm -hmm. there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathes this light bread. Right? We've been eating this manna. We had to walk this long way around. You couldn't even get through Edom. We've been eating the darn bread. It's light bread, so it don't really fill us up. And I've been eating it for two years. You know, who knows how many years because they stopped giving us the time. You know, so we've been eating it for, for a long time. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't no water again. Watch this. Remember, they on the move. They they did the water of Meribah. That was a specific place. It came out of a rock. So you got to load up on water and keep moving. Right? Keep going. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they he bit did the people. what now? Sent fiery serpents, okay, among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, "We have sinned, for we have spoken against Yahuwah mm -hmm. and against you. Pray unto Yahuwah that he may take away the serpents from us." Mm -hmm. And Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, "Make a fiery serpent mm -hmm. and set it upon a pole." And it came to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looks upon it, shall live. Right. Who created the problem there? The people. The people created the problem? Well, God created the problem with no water. When God created the problem. Who created the solution? God. You might look at that and be like, that's sick. Right? If you try to judge it by individual standards, right? You made these people get bit by snakes just so they come to you and look for a solution. And then you give them a solution that they got to look at this brass serpent to be healed by the snakes that you sent against them to bite them. You might look at that and be like, that's crazy or that's sick. No, it's crazy and it's sick for a person who ain't God do it. But when your parent is telling you to do something and focus on me and pay attention to me and then whoop you, right? To tell you to come. When we tell you, Stop that crying or I'll give you something to cry about. I'm, I created the problem and I'm giving you a solution also. But the solution has to be me. Now for an individual, that's pompous. Right? Because we're not God. When we look at it as God, he's telling you, I'm the only thing you can trust. And you keep turning away from me and trusting other things. So, yes, as long as you're doing that, I'm sending a problem.
the, the purpose of that problem is to turn you back to me because you don't realize with your dumb kid brain that I'm the only thing that you can trust. A parent can be wrong when they say that. God cannot. That's the difference. And even as a parent, they might hear this and relate to that. You don't think you're wrong when you're saying it. You think you're dead right when you say that type of stuff to your kid, right? Okay, well, God knows he's dead right. Keep going, watch this. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Israel set forward and pinched in Oboth. And they journeyed from Oboth and pitched in Aijabiram mm -hmm. in the wilderness, which is before Moab, toward the sun rising. <laughs> they before, they right in front of Moab, towards the sun rising. What would that be towards? Uh, the uh, east. They'd be West. toward towards the east, right? Oh, wait. Sun rising in the east. Yeah, yeah. 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 East, yeah. They'd be towards the east, right? So they, they right in front of Moab on the east side of it. Watch this. From there, they removed and pitched in the valley of Zered. Mm -hmm. From there, they removed and pitched in the other side of Arna, uh -huh. which is in the wilderness that comes out of the coast of the Amorites. Okay. For, for Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Okay. I should have pulled some maps together so we can kind of visualize where they are. Wherefore, it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord that he did what he did in the Red Sea and in the brooks of Arna. And okay. at the stream of the brooks that goes down to the dwelling of Ar and, li and lies upon the border of Moab, and from there they went to Beer. Mm -hmm. That is, well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses, gather the people together and I will give them water. Okay. And Israel sang this song, spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. The princes dig the well, the nobles of the people digged it by the direction of the lawgiver with their staves. And from the wilderness they went to Madaniah. Mm -hmm. And from Madaniah to Nahaliel, and from Nahaliel to Bamoth, and from Bamoth in the valley that is the country of Moab to the top Pisgah, which looks toward Yeshimon. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn to the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters or the well, but we will go along by the king's highway until we pass the borders. Right? Borders. So a very similar message to what we sent to, si uh, to uh, Edom. Right? Now we're talking to Sihon. We're like, look, let us go through. You know what I mean? We ain't going to mess with nobody's stuff. We just... Look, we just took a long, a long way around. We walked all the way around this thing on the back end, right? All the way around. We lost a bunch of time. We just trying to get into this land. We know we about to take it. I can't tell you all that, but we ain't even trying to mess with you specifically. We trying to get over on the other side. Can you help us out? Can we walk through? Let's see what Sion say. Remember, all these boys had heard about this, the, the rumor so far. And Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border, but Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness. And he came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. Right? He didn't even, listen, Sihon didn't even entertain that foolishness. Sihon said, okay, well, it's on now. I know what you're trying to do. I done heard about how y'all get down. We about to scrap. So Sihon go out and he looking like, we just going to strike first. Right? What happened then? And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Arnon unto Jabbok, even, mm -hmm. unto the children of, even unto the children of Ammon, for the border of the children of Ammon was strong. Mm -hmm. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites in Heshbon and in all the villages thereof. So we ended up whooping them out. We won, and then we took over all the cities. What do you think that do for our reputation? Oh, uh, yeah, we out there. Right? So if you look at our record right now, first scrap, you know what I'm saying, once we get close to the Canaanites, first scrap we had, we got whooped out. We come back, we fight the Canaanites again, and we win. We take over their cities. We went up against Edom. We didn't want it. We walked around. Sihon, we see him. He come out against us, we whoop him out. How do you think countries are going to be feeling now that's around in this area? A lot of them going to be like, oh, buddy, 
They took out King Sun. So, uh, is that right? I understand they got the other Canaanite crew, but I didn't know they were going to get Sion. And Sion right next door to us. That's the mindset. These people thinking like, uh-oh, these, these, these rowdy Negroes. You know what I'm saying? They come around here starting all these darn problems. Everybody chilling. Right? That's how they looking at it. Watch. Keep going. All right, actually, where we at? 20, verse 26. All right. For Heshbon was a city of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Arnon. Right? So he's telling you the king of Sihon went up against Moab. Moab to us is like a what? Brother. Like a brother or a cousin for us. Right? So Moab, right, he ended up taken or getting taken by Sihon. Sihon is not a Moabite. Right? We're going to learn more about this when we get into Deuteronomy. But it's a reason why these specific places are playing out. Right? The Most High God is guiding us down a specific path for a reason. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Wherefore they that speak the, in Proverbs say, Come to Heshbon, let the city of Sihon be built and prepared. Mm -hmm. For there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It has consumed Ar of Moab and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Woe to thee, Moab, you are undone, O people of Chemosh. He has given his sons that escape and his daughters into captivity unto Sihon, king of the Amorites. We have shot at them. Heshbon is perished even unto Debon, and we have laid them waste unto the, even unto Nopha, which reaches unto Amidiba. Right. Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. So that's the, what, what we just read right there was a saying that people said that glorified how Sihon took the land from the Moabites. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's what it's trying to, what the, what the book is trying to tell us right now is, Sihon was a bad man. He wasn't like, he wasn't no chump. Mm -hmm. But we just took him out. So understand that that sends shockwaves, right? If we put it in basketball terms, that would be like the Pelicans taking out the Suns. The Suns is the best team in the league right now. Uh, four games to zero. Huh? Sweep. What do you mean? It's like the Pelicans sweeping the Suns. Or just beating them. Right? In the first round, I'm the, the eighth seed, right? You the one seed. There's no way I'm supposed to, you know what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to, I'm not supposed to win. But then I win. What are people going to start looking at? Oh, that, that, that. Okay. The beginning of the year, who was favorites to come out of the East? Brooklyn. Brooklyn was favorites to come out of the East. Who was talking about the Celtics? Nobody. Who was talking about the Celtics a month ago? Everybody. No, they wasn't. A month ago. After January, a lot of people talk about it. No. A month ago, nobody had the Celtics beaten Book. Oh, Book. No, 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 they didn't know. Nobody looked at them on that level. All-Star, after that, they started to rise. Still, nobody looked at them like, y'all coming out the East, no. Celtics still coming out the East. Because guess what Kyrie was just doing? That boy having these perfect games. Yeah, 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 uh, doing all this stuff. They looking at Kyrie and KD. Oh, Kyrie back full time now? They looking at them too. Those are bad men. Celtics sweep them boys. How we look at Celtics now? Them boys bad. Everybody scared up. Everybody looking like, oh, Celtics here. That's how it's like when we when we whoop out Sihon. When we get Sihon, everybody looking like, oh, Sihon wasn't for play. So that's what the book is trying to tell us. Like, look, these are the things they used to say about Sihon when he took over Maya, uh, Moab. This is a bad man. There wasn't no chump that we just took out. So now everybody got to be scared. And you're going to see. Let's finish out this chapter. What, what chapter are we on? 21. 21, okay. Keep going. And Moses sent a spy out to Jazer, and they took the villages thereof and drove out the Amorites that were there. Mm -hmm. And they turned and went up by the way of Bashan, and Og, the king of Bashan, went out against them. He and all the people to battle at Edrei. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand and right. all his people. And so now, king. now the king Og, he tried to come after us. Right? We about to whoop him out too. Watch this. And you shall do unto him as you did unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So they smote him and his sons and all his people until there was none of them left alive and they possessed his land. Listen, everybody died. Women, children, babies, men, warriors, non-warriors, people with disabilities, 
You have it's it's cool to look at it and glorify it like, oh God, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Look at it for what it is. We, at God's command, walked into somewhere, took out swords and weapons, and killed everything. Little baby one, but they gotta die too. Look at it for what it is, so you understand the God that you serve it. Because if that offends you, right? You need to factor that in. God, at his command, said, kill every last one of them. Don't spare nobody. And we did that to two nations. What message do you think is being sent now? Oh, these some ruthless boys that's coming here. Huh? Here, go get your, go, go uh, have TJ wipe your nose. Thank you, TJ. Keep going. Watch this. Okay. We're not going to go to the next one because the next one we're going to see. We're going to see how people get shook now. All right? We're going to read the story of Balaam next week. All right? There's going to be a man, Balak. He's going to come looking like, yo, 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 yo. You know what I'm saying? These boys out here, I just need you to curse these boys for me because I don't think we can take them head up. <laughs> Put a little voodoo on them boys. Do something. Tell me how to beat them. Because I don't know if I can take them head up. They just took out Og and they took out Sihon. And they did that thing in a matter of whatever time. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? You do help me out. Help me. Somebody help me do something. Right? So we're going to go through this whole this whole little scenario with, uh, with Balaam and kind of see how that thing play out. Right? Any questions? All right, let's pray out.